everybody, welcome back to Taji's World of Books and welcome to a collaboration video. So as you saw, I am doing a collaboration with Jen from The Book Refuge. We're going to be talking to you about our favorite Outlander books. As you guys know, if you've been following me for some time now, I have read probably several months ago, six months ago, something in preparation for Go Tell the Bees that I am gone. I read all nine of the Outlander books and who really sort of pushed me in that direction to read those books was Jen, my good friend Jen at the Book Refuge, because she really started her channel. And if you go back and look at some of her backlist and I'll link all her stuff down below, she really started her channel in talking about the Outlander books. And so she is an absolute fan of them and anybody that she can encourage to read them, she she does and she encouraged me to read them and it was a great reading experience and so we've been chatting recently and she said hey let's do a collaboration where we rank order our thoughts on the Outlander books and I said absolutely let's do it I'm super excited for it okay so I tried to think about how I was gonna do this and I was thinking about like the best way do I want to do my least favorite to my most favorite do I want to do like little points about each book and here's what I'm gonna do because I think that that's gonna make this is gonna make the most sense because it makes sense in my mind and I hope that you guys are on board for this I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna give you a synopsis or just talk a little bit about things that stand out for me for each book and I'm gonna do them in order okay but then at the end of the video what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say these are my top these are my middle and these are my least because what happened for me is that many of these books are so all so really they're so good right they're all equally good that there's several books that really cluster right in the middle and I sort of rank them as I can't really separate them they're just all like really really good but there are three books that like stand out that are like the best and I absolutely love them and those are my top three favorite the rest sort of cluster in the middle and they're all really similar and then I have two at the end that I'm like I like them but they are like my least favorite if you will um, in terms of just enjoyability and what was happening in the story and pushing the story along so I'm hoping that that's gonna make sense to you and I can even in the in the description below I can try my best to rank them but I'm just gonna do top middle and least favorite because that just makes sense so without further ado let's get into it okay so the first book is Outlander this is like the old G this is the first in the series this is classified as women's fiction as I talked about before you know this is where Claire you know falls through the stones it's time travel she's on holiday with her husband Frank the war has ended and you know it's 1945 and she's trying to rekindle her relationship with Frank and they go to Inverness in Scotland and she goes up to Craig Nadoon she falls through the stones so what stands out for me in this particular book that are sort of like really takeaways is the love story and the slow burn situation that happens between Claire and Jamie because when she falls through the stones she is accosted by Captain Jack Black um, Jack Randall who was a distant relative of Frank her current husband and she also is sort of saved from him by the Scottish Highlanders and through a series of successive events to keep her safe and to keep her you know protected from you know Jack Black that really wants to harm her Jamie agrees to marry her but it really is a slow burn situation in that she is very much in love with her husband but it's a marriage of convenience it's also an age gap because Claire is also older than Jamie and so there's a lot of things that they go through a lot of trials and tribulations they go through a lot of challenges but they have to go through those challenges because everything that they go through serves to strengthen their relationship and it serves to strengthen their bond and I love when Jamie and she and Jamie get together and they agree to marry and they talk about their relationship and he's like I get that you love your husband I get that you still have feelings for him he's like I'm fine with that the only thing that I ask of you is honesty and trust and I was like you know what if every relationship can be based on that hallmark of honesty and trust then it, we would all be in a much better place and many more marriages would last much longer than they actually do 
You know, the one scene that I feel like that really stands out to me in this book is a controversial scene, and it's the scene where Claire is using her 20th century mindset, you know, her, 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 her 1940 mindset in the 17th century, and does things as an independent woman, a free-thinking woman, and she does something that puts the entire clan at risk because Jamie specifically told her, don't do this, she did that anyway, and as a result, they had to go and rescue her, and when they go and rescue her, potentially lives could be at risk, and the rest of the clan expects that Jamie takes her in hand, and he does, and he hits her, he spanks her, because he wants her, in, in the culture that he, and the time that he lives in, he wants her to learn and recognize that the choices and the decisions that you make have consequences, they affect other people, and they potentially can mean the lives and well-being of the clan as a whole. And you have to learn that you can't do that. And so there's a lot of conversation about him being chauvinistic and whether or not that's okay. But for me, it's a scene that really stands out because it stands out because it demonstrates the difference in culture. It demonstrates the difference in time, her time versus his time, how things were handled. But it also opens up a conversation between Claire and Jamie about how their relationship is going to proceed in the future and what that means for them and how they will communicate with one another and what type of relationship and what type of couple they will be. And he makes her a promise in this book that I will never do this again to you and I will never treat you in this way again. And there's a time later on where she begs him to, to actually punish her for something that she has done wrong and he absolutely won't do it. So for me, it's like a hallmark and a turning point in their relationship and in terms of how they communicate, how they respect each other, their feelings for one another, and the depth of the love that they have for one another. This to me is a book that will stand the test of time and in 20 years from now, I still think it'll be equally as wonderful as it is now. It is a beautiful love story. It is, it, it just is like the crescendo. It just doesn't get any better than this story between these two really different people who come together and through hard work, dedication, communication, and respect, equal, equal respect for who they are and what they bring to the table, but it's found over time, shows how a relationship can really go to epic, epic, epic levels. So for me, this is an amazing book. So this is like a crescendo. So that's that. And we're going to come back to that. Okay, so the next book is A Dragonfly in the Ember. I love this book because, and I'm, I don't want to spend too much time because I'll be here forever. I love this book because this is their relationship in France. And this is when, you know, they're really sort of trying, you know, she has revealed to, to Jamie that she is from the future, that she knows what's going to be happening, you know, coming up, that like historical-wise, she knows what's happening with the Bonnie Prince, you know, Charlie, and with the Jacobite Rising. Then there's the battle at Culloden. The thing that stands out to me is, you know, towards the end of this book, and I love that they're dynamic in France and all of the things, the work that she did as a nurse and, you know, really in working in the healing arts and her finding her voice and finding her sort of stride while she's in France and what that means. I also love, you know, that she, they, they were able to finally get pregnant and they're pregnant with Faith and like all of like what's happening with that. But I think that the thing that stands stands out to me in this book is that the battle at Culloden is coming. They've done everything that they could to try to prevent this and to see that it's going to happen anyway. And they are back in Scotland and Dougal overhears her saying to Jamie, like, maybe we should just, they're trying to figure out, like, what do we do? How do we stop this? Because this is going to be an epic, colossal sort of screw up. If this happens, it's going to impact so many people for such a long period of time. She, and they sort of are brainstorming. They're like, well, maybe we should, you know, kill him. Maybe we should, you know, try to t try to take him out. And he, Dougal, hears this and he goes, I knew you were a treacherous wench and I knew that you were against us. And he basically is going to try to, Dougal is going to try to kill Claire and Jamie is having none of it. And so he has to step in and basically his God, you know, foster father, stepfather, however you want to call what Dougal is to Jamie, he has to kill him because Dougal is going to kill Claire. And so as a result, he's like, you know, the battle at Culloden is coming. I have to answer for killing Dougal. The clan is out to get me. Like, this is not a safe time for you. And I can't have, 
I can't have you here. So he basically takes her back to Craig Nadoon and he is getting ready to send her back through the stones because they feel like they have no other alternative and no other recourse. And my favorite, favorite, most amazing scene here is she's like, I'm not going to leave you. You can't make me go back. And he's like, I absolutely can and will. You have to go back. And he's like, and you, if you don't do it for me, do it for the Baron. And she's like, oh. How did you know? And he's like, you haven't had your courses in 46 days. And from the time that I've taken you to my bed, I, you've never missed a course. And as a result, like, I just know. And you have to go back to Frank and you have to ensure that this that a part of me lives on in the future. And for me, it is the most self-sacrificing sort of move or step that anybody or any man can take to sacrifice the love of your life and to send them forward to a different time, to be with a different man, to know that you're gonna sacrifice everything because you know that you're not gonna be here to do it is just an amazing, amazing sort of sacrifice. I also like that this is the first time that I start to recognize that Diana uses contrast she used and her contrasts are good and evil or good and bad and she does contrast in each of her characters Claire Jamie Jack Randall like we all like Stephen Bonnet we see it throughout all of the books and when you start to really think about the juxtaposition and in this book I feel like we've hated Jack Randall for ever from the first book because of what he did to Jamie and how he assaulted Jamie. And but then we see him in this book with his relationship with Alex and we see that he loves his brother so much and will do anything to protect his brother and keep his brother safe so that when his brother Alex gets sick, he is willing to marry his sis, his his brother's you know, girlfriend or fiance or betrothed, the mother of his child, because she is pregnant and Alex asks him to. And so, you know, he's a complicated character. So therein is that, that, that the angst and the conflict is created there because, you know, he's, we have seen him as being awful and evil for so long. But then when you see the self-sacrifice that he's willing to do and how he is with Alex, you're like, he can't be all that bad, even though he is really evil. And so that juxtaposition is what creates the angst rather than creating artificial angst there is angst within you know each individual because we are not all bad or we're not all good at certain times we do we make bad choices and do bad things and at other times we do self-sacrificing things and sometimes we do self-aggrandizing things and so it really just depends on the circumstances and situations you know but there's a continuum and there's an extreme in that continuum so that's how i feel about this one then there is Voyager, so I'm gonna go really quickly. Voyager is like, okay, now we see that she is, Claire is back with Frank, she's gone back through the stones, right? She returns, she's pregnant, she's undernourished, she goes back to Frank, you know, and basically she has to say to Frank, like, you gotta take me back, like, we've gotta have a conversation about whether or not we're gonna be together or not, and so that basically takes place. But what we're seeing is that this book really jumps 20 years later, and that she is, Frank has, passed away and has died and the story sort of is told in reverse but in this book he has passed away and now Claire takes Brianna back through the stones back to Scotland you know we get to see in here through her telling the story backwards and forwards her life with Frank and so for me this is the first time that I really start to look at Frank in a selfless way and and say that this was really a difficult situation that was thrust upon Frank and Frank had to make some really hard decisions very quickly as to whether or not he was going to take Claire back and he was going to raise this child and not only you know to know that your wife has had an extramarital affair but had fallen in love with the person that she had the affair with after you were sort of struggling with her being missing for all of this time. This also is the book where we discover Roger, you know, the vicar's son, adopted son. And this is where Claire is deciding, you know, whether or not, at first we're not sure if she's just gonna like end it or if she's gonna go back through the stones. We later find out that she's going back through the stones. And this is where she rekindles her relationship with Jamie and filling in the blanks. And this is my first time where I start to like get irritated with Claire and I start to feel like Claire is very judgmental and her the standards that she holds for herself are very different than the standard that she holds for other people. So we know that she had a 
20 year marriage and relationship, whether happy, unhappy, whether you wanted to be in it or not, you did. You had a 20 year relationship with Frank, okay? And you can't think over 20 years that Jamie didn't have relationships. And this is where she starts to get judgmental about finding out about Hellsmere and Lord John and that there was something going, that Lord John had more feelings for Jamie than Jamie has sort of revealed to her. And I feel like this is where she gets to be, we start to see that juxtaposition in Claire. Whereas like in Outlander, I really saw her in a certain way. Now I'm starting to go, Claire, you're really judgmental, really judgmental. And you really have a double standard about how you see, you, you know, different people and how you hold the standard for yourself and what you hold for other people. So this is Voyager. Then we have Drums of Autumn. And this is, man, this is where I really love, this is such a complicated, deep tale. There's so much going on. This is where they go back to uh, Aunt Jocasta. We see what's going on with Aunt Jocasta. This is where Brianna leaves and goes through the stones on her own. You know, so there's sort of a split timeline and, you know, Bri Claire has left Brianna in Scotland and in Boston with Roger. And so the relationship with Roger and Brianna is developing, but Brianna takes it upon herself to leave and she goes through the stones on her own and Roger follows her. You know, the thing that really stands out in my mind about this particular book is where Brianna and Claire hide information from Jamie that Roger pays the price for. And so there are three people that I'm sort of really angry at in this particular book. It's Brianna and Claire for hiding information and not telling Jamie about Roger so that when and then Jamie for being judgmental and jumping to conclusions and acting like an ass. And then the maidservant Lizzie for assuming what she sees and thinking she knows what's going on. And so all of that sort of miscommunication is what leads Roger to being put into captivity for over a year. And so, you know, because of the assault that Stephen Bonnet did on Brianna. And so again, this is where Brianna is demonstrating a lot of behavior very similar similar to Claire when she sees the ring on Stephen Bonnet's finger she jumps into you know action and she wants the ring back but she puts herself in a precarious situation not recognizing that you're not in the 80s girl like you're back in the 1700s you got to be really careful as a woman about how you approach things and then you know the other thing that stands out in my mind is how when they do get Roger back how they handle the whole pregnancy thing right it's right away Brianna tells Stephen Bonnet, this baby is yours and this is the only piece of you that he's ever going to have and like you, you're never going to see him again. She automatically assumes that the baby is Stephen Bonnet. Whereas with Roger, she's like, the baby's probably not yours. And so like you guys have to decide. You have to decide what you want to do. And so Brianna and um, Jamie as well as Claire are all like, as soon as he comes back, he's like back for a day and he's like got one day to process it. And they're like, you need to figure out what you're gonna do and this baby is not yours and you're gonna have to either step up and accept responsibility or you're gonna keep going and stay out of my daughter's life and I'm gonna protect her from you and blah, blah, blah. And they spew this up. I was just like, oh my God, like this is, give the dude a minute to process. Like, first of all, Jamie, you acted like an ass. You beat him to an inch of his life and then sold him to the Mohawks and sold him into slavery. And he's been in captivity for the better part of a year. And, you know, Claire, because of you, you know, hiding things and not being honest about things and not, you know, divulging to Jamie, Jamie acted, you know, in really bad ways. And as a result, Roger was negatively impacted. And so now you guys are all expecting things to like hop and jump and he's supposed to act the way you want him to instantly. And it just doesn't work that way. So in my mind, this is what stood out, but it's still nonetheless a really, really powerful story. Um, and I look at this as really as Roger and Brianna's story, and I really like to see the coming of age. And I like to see how Jamie's relationship started with Roger on a really horrible footing, but they have to work together, and they have to kind of develop their relationship and develop the rapport over time, and that's gonna take time to build. That's not an easy thing to do because Jamie screwed it up royally from the beginning. And I think also you have to know that Roger comes from a completely different time. You know, like, Jamie's been a layered, you know, and Jamie is like a man's man, and like, Jamie had to live a hard life and he had to figure it out and he had to be like he couldn't be a scholar like he had to be a fighter he had to be a clansman he had people to take care of and people that were counting on him and if he made a mistake like people died 
three like Roger didn't Roger grows went to Oxford like Roger is a scholar like Roger is like singing songs and like you know living in the 80s and like just like kicking back and living his best life and now he's thrust into the 1700s that you have to either you kill what you eat he's like I don't know how to survive in this I don't know how to build a cabin I don't know how to hunt game like of course I'm not gonna live up to your standard because we come from completely different times I didn't have to be like that so you got to give me time to get there so it's all about development. So this is a powerful, powerful, powerful book. There is a lot that's going into this, and this is this packs a punch. Okay, so then the next book in the series is The Fiery Cross. And for me, this is like day-to-day -day life. This is like more of like, you know, the development of the story. This is more about um, learning about what was happening at Hellsmere Prison, like what was happening between Lord John. This is about Jamie and Claire coming upon Fanny Beardsley. And then, you know, Fanny Beardsley has this baby. And so she abandons the baby and is left to Claire and Jamie. And this is where I love the conversation um, that Claire and Jamie have where Jamie is like listen I wasn't able to give you another child because of our circumstances but I, I, I want you to have that if that's what you want but I'm not willing to sacrifice your life and so we're sort of getting to that age where it's not really worth it for me to sacrifice you so that we can have another baby but if this is what you want and you want another baby here we can keep this baby or I can try and do something else for you and to ensure that we have that life together and it's interesting because they sort of talk about that Claire sort of thought about there at one point when she was in the future whether or not she was going to have a hysterectomy or not and she decided not to because she didn't want to take away that opportunity from Jamie because or from, you know that opportunity should it come up in the future and they ultimately decide that it's not for them and that they don't need to have any more children and but you know I think that that having the conversation was really essential and really important and I'm glad that it was discussed um, and while it would have been difficult she was still having her courses so I think it was something that's possible albeit probably difficult but I do think that they found newfound family in that you know they've got Roger with them they've got Brianna they've got you know um, Fergus they've got Ian they, they have a family and a uh, all the people that are on the ridge and everybody that they're helping and that they have with them and so they are having an opportunity to raise children and to be parents to children albeit in a different way but their family is growing and developing and so the things that were missed out on for those 20 years is really being made up for in spades but in different ways um, this is also the um, the part of the conversation where Roger is hanged by because of some silly things that Roger does and you know and also I think this is where I again get really frustrated at Claire because she's really judgy and she handles things in ways her Roger and Brianna sometimes I'm like y'all are from the future stop being so judgy about how people do things like you know you don't get to like superimpose your ideas and beliefs onto this you know this 17th century or whatever 18th century time that we and in terms of like how we would have handled it currently so that's that so here, the thing that stands out to me in a, um, in a breath of snow and ash, I absolutely loved. It's one of the best parts of this is really the Beardsley twins and Lizzie's story. And how, and again, Claire being judgy, but they're basically in a menage situation. And, you know, Lizzie is pregnant and this there, but Lizzie had several suitors and, you know, some things came out. And when Claire heard about it, she's like, you absolutely can't do that. And I'm like, well, with the judging, because I could judge you, because in my time, I'm like, Minaj, have at it. Like, do, do you, you guys do what you want to do. But this is a, a really interesting time. You know, more of Claire's medical prowess and medical healing. She's very well respected on the ridge. Again, like the Beardsley twins and Lizzie, they're gonna decide to live their life the way that they want to and they do ultimately do that. We also see that Fergus is struggling in, in terms of because he's lost his hand and how is he going to be able to support his family and not put all the work on, you know, Marsley. And so then this is when they decide to send Fergus back to the print shop with his family and that ultimately works out to be a very good decision, you know, for them. This is also the book where Claire is assaulted and, you know, how that changes her viewpoint and how she addresses things and what that does to her. And that is a, it's huge, 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 huge in this book as well. 
an echo in the bone. I think the thing that I want to talk about here is that this is the this is the part where they have gone back to um, Scotland for various reasons, and Claire has to come back on her own because of Marsley's son needs his adenoids taken out, and the only person they trust to do it is Claire, and so she leaves Jamie in. In Scotland and Jamie is going to take another boat back at a different time and through a series of successive events that Lord John gets word that Jamie that Jamie died because the ship that he was on sunk simultaneously Claire is going to be arrested for sedition and Lord John says if you want to be protected you have to marry me and so she decides to marry Lord John I'm not mad about the marrying part. I get that she had to marry him. I get why she married him. I understand that. What I am upset about is that Claire, in a weak moment, slept with Lord John. And not only did she sleep with Lord John, when the information finally makes its way how she, to Jamie, when we discover that Jamie is not dead, how she chooses to handle that and the indignance that she demonstrates with that. We'll come back to that in a moment. The other thing that stands out in my mind that I really like is that Brianna and Roger's story is still going on. They go back through the stones to the future because Mandy needs a life saving heart surgery and so you know when they're there some things she gets the surgery they're in Boston for a period of time they actually go back to Lollybrook they purchase Lollybrook and some things happen and they find out that they're not as safe in the future as they once thought that they were and so Roger believes that Jemmy has gone through the stones so he goes through the stones with Buck because Buck turns up in the future and doesn't know what the heck he's doing there or how he's gotten there but you know recognizing he's a Mackenzie Roger takes Buck under his wing even though Buck is the reason that he got hanged in the first place way back in other books he takes him under his wing and they then I love Buck and and Roger's story of traveling through the stones and getting to see Dougal getting to see Gillis getting to see a young Ian getting to see going back to Lollybrook seeing a young Jenny like that whole storyline is so fun and so like you know it's just really mysterious you get like secrets are revealed lots going on and so this is a fun 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 book for sure okay so then in written in my own heart's blood <laughs> really quickly we find that you know Jamie is alive they're going back to Frazier's Ridge they're having a conversation about Claire marrying Lord John Claire again got indignant how dare you accost me about it because he's like I forgive you Jamie says to him her I forgive you for what you've done she's like forgive me forgive me for what I haven't done da, da, da. and I'm like girl sit, sit down Claire sit down sit down sit down because she you know she she did she slept with Lord John we could talk about all day long the reasons why she didn't what happened da, 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 da. but you know the same reasons that she sort of accosted Jamie and sort of was mad at Jamie because she didn't know about Lord John or because he slept with you know he married you know you know Mar Marsley's mom you know and all of these other circumstances or because he had Willem you know and like he slept with Willem's mom like wh under what circumstances all of these things you know Claire does equally the same so this is what I was talking about like in terms of we're not all good or we're not all bad but Claire sort of in the moment she gets really judgy and high-handed and on her high horse about certain things and she needs to kind of step back and when she does step back she thinks it through and she recognizes that I'm like okay maybe I haven't I haven't I haven't handled this quite the right way but in that moment when she pops off she pops off in a really judgy way so um and then we find out that Brianna and Roger are back and so the clan are back on again at Fraser's Ridge and the story is evolving and developing and for me in Go Tell the Bees this is a great book this is you know where Jamie and Claire are gonna have it out about like the whole Lord John thing Claire still feels like that she can communicate with Lord John in the same way that she used to not recognizing that her deciding to marry Lord John has eroded the friendship between Jamie and Lord John and it's not the same Jamie hates Lord John not the same can't be the same never gonna be the same you don't get to like Lord John doesn't get to write you and then you're like I'm gonna write him back and Jamie's like hell no no you're not and so she's like why don't I go Brianna do you think if you should go and write a letter you know like all that the other thing that stands out in my mind is that like there's a lot of history 
and secrets that are being revealed. William's storyline is developing. We're learning about Willem. And, um, you know, there are things that happened 20, 30 years ago that now Brianna and Roger are all up in the mix and knowing what happened in Jamie's past and what happened to Claire. And there's just too much sharing for me. There's a lot. Like, there has to be some privacy or some things that have happened in my past that are my past and that have nothing to do with you and I'm going to keep it separate and, like, it's just independent and not related. Um, and then also we're learning more about Frank Randall and whether or not we feel like, is he a good guy? Is he a bad guy? Did he know she was going to go back through the stones? Is she harboring secrets? Is he keeping secrets? Is he telling? Did he prepare Brianna? So there's a lot of development there as well. So this is a powerful book and we can see that this is moving forward and the story is going to continue to develop. So now let's get to, I've talked a long, so now let's get to the part where I tell you my rank order of these books so my top books the first the first tier that I'm like these are absolutely my favorite is Outlander is like I said number one phenomenal then it is very very closely followed by Drums of Autumn this is such a powerful book I absolutely loved it so that's two and then three is A Dragonfly in Ember this is, these three books right here are just, they, they're in a league of their own. They are just phenomenal, right? Like they just are, are supersede in so many ways all the other books. So then we get to like that sort of middle, that middle group. And Echo and the Bone is next. So that's four. Voyager, five. Written in My Own Heart's Blood, six. Then A Fiery Cross is seven. And then my least favorite books are A Snow of Breath and Ash. And then Go Tell the Bees I'm Gone. And when I say least favorite, you got to take that with a grain of salt. Because this series is so amazing and so good that even though they're least favorite, they're still five out of five star. Like all of these books I've ranked five out of five star. But like if I was absolutely to say like my, like my heart are these three. These three are just phenomenal. Phenomenal, phenomenal. Just doesn't get any better than that. But like I said, overall, the series is a top five star. She's still writing in this. She's been writing in this for 30 years. We got more coming. There are other like little novellas and short stories and Lord John and cookbooks and different things like that that are out there that are spattered. But these are the main sort of core books in the Outlander series. The, um, the show is getting ready to come out with season six, and I think that's going to be dropping like here in the, like, the next couple weeks, so we're super excited about that. So you guys, that is all that I have today. Like I said, thank you to Jen from The Book Refuge. This is a collaboration with her. Please go and check out her video. I'll link it in the uh, description below, and she probably has got so much more depth because she's been reading these for years and years, and she's read each of the books multiple, multiple times, so you want to hear more about it, go and check out Jen's channel and check out her video on this as well so she's going to do a great job with that i'm absolutely sure and that's all that i have you guys so thank you so much for joining me and do me a favor and hit that bell notification button so you can be notified every time i upload a new video which is generally monday wednesday and friday hit that like button so you can help me with the youtube algorithm because it really helps me and that's all that i have for today so i look forward to seeing you in my next video bye